Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and you remember how last week I told you about the Supreme Court of Canada application for leave to appeal against the CRTC's decision allowing TV stations to exclude candidates from televised debates. And today, uh, James Turner filed his application on Friday the 11th for, uh, to the Supreme Court of Canada. And this is the guy who filed the application for prohibition of his marijuana charges. And the Crown, rather than do the normal documentation, slid his appeal into the inmates' appeal court, which didn't have to do the documentation. And even though he protested, the Court of Appeal dismissed his appeal when he didn't show up, which is one of the rare times that an inmate appeal gets dismissed because the guards couldn't find the prisoner. So this is the... Memorandum of James Turner at the Supreme Court of Canada, Part 1. In the Supreme Court of Canada, on appeal from the Ontario Court of Appeal, between James Earl Turner, applicant, and Her Majesty the Queen, respondent, notice of application for leave to appeal, pursuant to Section 59.4 of the Supreme Court Act, take notice that applicant James Earl Turner hereby applies for leave to appeal to the court in forma pauperis from the judgment of Ontario Court of Appeal Justices Stephen Gouge, Robert Armstrong, and Robert Blair, dismissing the application for leave to appeal and inmate appeal due to the inmate not appearing for the hearing. The grounds are that since the appellant was not an inmate, A. The Registrar of the Ontario Court of Appeal erred in scheduling the appeal without first having verified that Rule 18.3 requiring transcripts, Rule 16.1 requiring FACTA, Rule 18.2 requiring certificates of perfection, and Rule 18.1 requiring proofs of service for non-inmate appeals had been complied with. B. The Court of Appeal erred in using the inmate appeal rules. C. The Inmate Appeal Court erred in dismissing the inmate's application for leave to appeal when no inmate application for leave to appeal had been filed by the non-inmate appellant. D. The Inmate Appeal Court erred in dismissing an inmate appeal as abandoned because the guards couldn't find the prisoner. Dated at Ottawa on August 10th, James Turner. Now the memorandum... So this is the court's decision out of the Court of Appeal. And there it says very clearly in the matter of James Earl Turner, uh, this application for leave to appeal and the appeal by way of inmate appeal uh, are dismissed. So, appellant's memorandum. Statement of facts. On November the 26, 2008, applicant's application for an order of prohibition was dismissed by Ontario Superior Court Justice Lalonde. 2. On December the 3rd, transcripts were ordered in an appeal and received by the court registry on March the 30th, 2009. Ontario Court of Appeal Registrar Uget Thompson informed appellant the transcript prepared for the appeal by the court reporter in Ottawa had been improperly prepared. Unfortunately, while upgrading the transcript, the court reporter died. And after numerous delays, the transcript was filed on August the 7th, 2009. Exhibit A of the Affidavit of James Turner. 4. On June the 1st, appellant received an appeal book from the Crown with a notice that the appeal had somehow been scheduled for hearing on June 16th, 2009 without any of the required documentation. No transcripts, no factums, no certificate of perfection. Crown Maureen McGuire explained in her June 5th email, and this is Exhibit B of the affidavit, Thank you for forwarding a copy of Mr. Turner's email to our office. The Crown is opposed to the adjournment requested by Mr. Turner. The appeal book is complete and contains all the material required for the hearing of the appeal. So we say the registrar failed to verify that the appeal had been perfected and took the Crown's word that it contained all the material required for the hearing of this appeal when it omitted the required factum of argument from each party. 
McGuire, 7. I have confirmed with Crown Counsel on the application below that there was no evidence heard in the court below. Therefore, the transcript of Mr. Turner is waiting for would simply be submissions. Submissions are not normally part of the required transcripts for an appeal unless otherwise ordered by the court. And we respond, point eight, transcripts are required for an appeal unless otherwise ordered by the court, not by the Crown Attorney. And we have the Real Martin case in the Court of Appeal where we, we've made an application to dispense with the transcripts. And that's still waiting to be heard. But these guys are saying, well, since you don't need transcripts, we'll just go ahead without it. Well, no, you have to ask a judge to dispense with the transcripts. And the court reporters didn't, the registrar just took the Crown's word for it. They weren't needed. So they're not. Uh, McGuire, Mr. Turner filed notice of appeal more than four months ago. And can we say any delay was due to the death of the court reporter, not due to the appellant? 11. To, uh, McGuire, Mr. Turner also asked that his appeal be moved to Toronto. While we have no preference as to whether this appeal is heard in Toronto or in Kingston, really. I understand that the Toronto list this month is very lengthy and that this matter can more conveniently be heard in Kingston. 12. Skipping the factums was just a matter of convenience, but it is wrong to mislabel the appellant as an inmate in an effort to evade compliance with the normal rules of procedure. 13. McGuire. It is of some importance that this appeal not be delayed. 14. It was of more importance that all the required documentation should be filed. 15. Though the appeal had been listed for hearing in the Kingston Correctional Services Building, there was no suspicion that the appellant was being called before the Inmate Appeals Court. Appellant had requested being heard at Osgood Hall in Toronto, like all other normal non-inmate appeals, despite the Crown's claims to convenience in Kingston. 16. Rule 16.1. Except in an inmate appeal, all parties to an appeal shall deliver a factum. There are no exceptions for skipping the filing of factums in a non-inmate appeal. So, appellant asked the registrar if this R versus Turner appeal was the first to go to hearing without any factums in the record. 17. Rule 18.1. Except in an inmate appeal in Kingston, the appellant shall serve on every other party to the appeal one copy of the appeal book, one copy of the transcript, and one copy of the appellant's factum, and immediately thereafter file with the registrar proof of service of the appeal book, the transcript, and the factum. There are no exceptions for skipping the filing of transcripts, factums, proof of service in a non-inmate appeal. 18. Rule 18.2 the appellant shall file with the registrar two copies of a certificate of perfection, stating blah, blah, blah. Well, it doesn't even say except in inmate appeals. So everybody's got to file a certificate of perfection. Is this the first appeal ever scheduled without a certificate of perfection? Or has the Crown been skipping them for inmate appeals already? 19. Rule 18.3. The appellant shall perfect the appeal within 90 days after the transcripts have been delivered to the Court of Appeal. Well, transcripts were mailed to the Court of Appeal on August 7, 2009, leaving appellant until November to perfect the appeal. 